Hey everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. Welcome to another video for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And today we're going to get into a little bit about the dark web and things that we're seeing currently on the dark web. This is some new uh, information that's came out in, in the last couple of days, so this isn't old rehashed stuff that we're going to go through. And uh, just before I get into that, if you uh, like anything that you see in this video or you're entertained or educated in any way, we ask you to please hit that like button down below. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us out greatly to put out more content and, uh, and be motivated to put things and videos out like this. Um, and if you want to work with us in any way, shape, or form, head over to our website at xitx.com. And let's get into it. Um, Couple of things. Arctic Wolf Networks, um, a uh, security operations uh, company, um, they put out an annual report um, and put out some key findings in their annual report that I'm going to go into and talk about today, uh, especially the part about um, the dark web and highlighting some things about the dark web and the role that the dark web plays uh, in cyber attacks on businesses. Um, there were several key themes in this report as you can see on the screen uh, theme number one is the forced dispersion of the workforce has created an increase in e email compromises um, and email is still the number one way that hackers are able to uh, infiltrate an organization either through tricking a user to click on something or click on an attachment or the takeover of that person's email account where they're able to either prey on or further attacks within the organization by using the compromised email account. Um, well, uh, theme number two in the report is uh, ransomware remains a key threat to organizations, which I, which I talk about all the time on this channel and how prevalent ransomware is. Uh, theme number three in the report is traditional patching timelines are no longer acceptable, um, basically saying that um, uh, many organizations wait hours uh, or, or weeks or day or even 30 days or longer to patch systems and they're saying that this needs to be done a lot quicker because uh, basically what happens is is when a um, a vulnerability is released uh, the, either the code is released or the actual vulnerability is out there in the wild for anyone to see attackers then begin to start uh, exploiting those vulnerabilities on unpatched systems, otherwise known as a zero day type of threat. But that window is getting shorter and shorter, where if a zero day may have come out, you may have had maybe a week, let's say, to patch, two weeks, three weeks, a month even. Um, that is shrinking and that is, it, you need to patch quicker and you need to have a patching strategy that gets uh, these systems up to date quicker than what we're seeing traditionally happen out there. Um, so theme number four, and this is the one I want to get into a little bit, is, um, is remain vigilant in the face of increasing account takeover attacks, account takeover attacks. This is when somebody uses a valid username or password to uh, attack your account and get in and, and do damage. So think about um, your VPN or your email, the username and password that you use for that. They're attacking those and they're getting in not through you know breaking the glass, but literally they have the key to unlock the door to get in. Um, and that's what this is the equivalent to. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that publicly disclosed breaches are down year over year, uh, which gives everyone a false sense of security that things are getting better. Things are not getting better. Things are just not being reported like they should. Ransomware attacks are at an all time high. And this report goes on to explain that since March, the number of plain text usernames or passwords exposed is up 429%. So what that means is, is that the number of usernames and passwords that are available on the dark web for hackers to try to use to exploit a company or somebody within a company um, is up 429%. And we monitor the dark web for our clients here at Exact IT Solutions for passwords and things like that on the dark web. And I can tell you that in the last even two months, 
we've seen a tremendous uptick in the amount of passwords and the passwords that when we go to our clients and explain to them that this password that they've used associated with this email address is now on the dark web, they immediately say, oh my goodness, that's a password that I'm currently using or that's one that I just changed to recently. Um, so what happens is, is, is websites and, and companies that you use regularly are being exploited and the, and the usernames and passwords are being taken and put out on the dark web. So that's why we always recommend using a password manager. Always change your password from site to site or application to application. If Try to use a unique password whenever you can because when they harvest this data and it gets dumped on the dark web, they can sort your information by let's say your email address and then see all the passwords that you've used over the years and then take those passwords, put them in a software program and that software program then uses a bunch of different combinations of those passwords to try to maybe guess what your current password is. So if you're not changing it to something completely random or you're reusing certain passwords like birth dates and favorite teams and pets names and stuff like that, you can still be vulnerable because you might use a different variation of it and then hackers use all these exploited websites and databases that they have at their disposal and they try to figure out maybe you're using a different variation of this password or that password. So we always recommend use a password manager, a, a different unique password on every website that you use because you don't know when a particular website is going to be hacked. And when that website does get hacked and they are able to get the password, then your information is now going to be on the dark web. Your passwords are going to be on the dark web. They're going to be for sale and you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you continue to use that password across multiple sites. And especially if you use that password or a similar password to log into your work accounts and your email, etc. So um, we, you know, we do see a massive uptick in what's going on on the dark web. Um, and we also see a massive uptick in the amount of ransomware attacks that are happening right now. And, you know, that that goes that brings me into my next uh, article that I want to get into that hit yesterday which was that Revel, um, and if you watch these videos on my YouTube channel here, you know who Revel is. Uh, and if you don't, Revel is a Russian uh, supposedly state-sponsored hacking group. There's no uh, hard proof that that's the case, uh, but they do operate out of Russia. Um, they are responsible for uh, the uh, ransomware as a service um, uh, the strain of uh, uh, so, so, Sodi no Kibi. I always get that wrong, so I wanted to look at it first before I said it. Um, but they put, this is an interesting revelation on, on number one, this is another reason why businesses need to stop paying the ransom because you're enabling these hackers to do ludicrous things like this. Um, but they put a million dollars of Bitcoin on a public forum. Basically, they deposited a million dollars into a Bitcoin account. They put the Bitcoin uh, address out there and they basically said, we have a million dollars out here um, to that we want to pay to really good hackers and really good people that are good at one specific skill set, which is penetration testing. Um, they want to bring in... Uh, really smart people uh, who uh, are really good at penetration testing and that means breaking down the front door. Um, typically that is not a, a way that these hackers get into systems. Typically they use some kind of phishing attempt or social engineering or some sort of trick to get into systems unless there's like a really like really well-known exploit that's available to them um, but basically what they're doing is they're saying we want hackers that know how to bust down the front door on different devices um, so anything that's connected to the internet could potentially be a door or a window into your network um, that's why you know this month with cybersecurity awareness month it's if 
if you connect it, protect it. And that's the idea here is you want to protect these things from things like this happening. So they are investing a million dollars of their stolen money that they've probably stolen from other businesses in the United States that have paid the ransom. And they're taking that money to go find more talent, to go bring in more hackers and people that are really good at penetration testing. And I got to tell you, the way that they're doing this and the way that they're putting this out there and the amount of money that they're potentially offering somebody, it makes it really uh, enticing for somebody who is, let's say, on the good side of the cybersecurity team to want to look at this and go, wow, I can make a lot more money over there with my skill sets. Um, it's, it's scary because there's a lot of good people on the good side of cybersecurity um, and I would just be concerned that those good people would be enticed by something like this uh, to jump over to the other side and help uh, a criminal group like Revel uh, further attacks on, you know, businesses around the world. Um, so, you know, they just basically say, say here they deposited a million worth of Bitcoin on a Russian hacking form on September 28th to move what's done as part of a public recruitment effort. Um, and they basically say that the ransomware attacks uh, obviously involve software that freezes computers and they go into everything that Revel has done. They used to run WannaCry um, and now they are recruiting new expert hackers to carry out more attacks. To show off Revel's capabilities, the group deposited 99 Bitcoin worth about a million dollars to entice new hackers. For your peace of mind and confidence, we have made a deposit of one million U.S. dollars, the hackers reportedly said online. Um, it was to promote confidence in Revel, meaning that we have the money to pay you and we were willing to pay you. Uh, it was timed alongside a recruitment post targeting hackers that are skilled in penetration testing. Uh, and in the post itself, Revel also detailed the software experience they were searching for. And they say, teams that already have experience and skills in penetration testing, working with MSF, CS, and Kodiak, NAS, Tape, Hyper-V, and analogs of the listed software devices. Now, I typically don't want to get too technical on this channel. Um, I know what this means. And th what this means is these are the types of services and things that we want to try to attempt to target or t attempt to exploit. Um, I can already tell you uh, the Hyper-V being on here, we are already seeing um, instances where hacking groups are basically getting control of a hypervisor server. And basically what that means is, is um, today most servers are run in a virtual type environment, meaning they run, they share multiple servers or multiple VMs as they're called, virtual machines, will share hardware with one server. So think of it as you buy a box, you buy a server, and you can run four different servers on that box using VM technology. And what we're seeing is, is hackers are getting control of that hypervisor system, and they're installing their own, their own VM on the system, which many companies are not even looking for yet. They're, they're not they're not in tune to this particular type of exploit, and it's really not an exploit. They're just taking advantage of weak security protocols, and companies uh, don't have these hypervisor systems integrated with their security like they should, and hackers know this, and they're jumping on these systems. They're spinning up their own VMs um, that go completely undetected, and now this is a system that they own and control that's now part of your network. Um, that your IT people didn't set up, they don't have their tools on, they don't have the ability to monitor, manage, and maintain it like the other systems that are part of your network. They come in, they install basically this computer, and it's the equivalent of basically coming in with their own computer and plugging it into your network and then being able to use that computer to do various things and move laterally across your network. So I didn't want to get too technical on you. So if you have any questions about that, drop them in the comments below. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope this gives you some insight on what's happening out there on the dark web. 
and I look forward to bringing you more information this month about cybersecurity and making you more cyber aware. Again, please like this, uh, this video if you learned anything or liked anything that I, I brought forth here. And please uh, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It helps us out greatly. I will speak to you all soon. Have a great day.